Just a kid with a dream. That's former Mount Pisgah standout Kyle Sloter's mentality as he begins his first day of NFL training camp after being signed as a priority free agent by the Denver Broncos. My idea is to just be the best version of myself, not worry about what the other guys do because I can't control them and what goes on with them. I feel like I'm good enough to get the job done if you know I can get there. Now Sloter will have to beat out former Ole Miss star Chad Kelly for the third roster spot in Denver. But he's no stranger to adversity. In fact, he's faced it his entire football career. People that look up to me is just like, what, what do they think if I give up? You know, I'd rather just finish it through and maybe not have played. Slitter's incredible journey to the NFL came at a few stops. First at Southern Mississippi, then at Northern Colorado, where he was finally given a fair shot at quarterback. A position, fittingly enough, that the Broncos know a lot about. It's a great opportunity, and that's part of the reason why I went to Denver is just because what more could you want as a quarterback than to learn from a guy like John Elway or a Peyton Manning who's still in the building. Uh, everybody's doubted him from uh, being a college quarterback, and he proved them wrong, and everybody said he couldn't play in the NFL. So I, I have no doubt, based on his, his competitiveness, his grit, that uh, he's going to give it a great shot, and I have all the confidence in the world in him. It's an underdog story that's been ongoing since high school for the North Fulton native. But who's to say that the kid with the dream can overcome the odds just one more time? In Alpharetta, Miles Garrett, Fox 5 Sports. So when's Ozzy Albies going to make his debut in the big leagues? That's the question all Braves fans have been asking for the past year now. But don't ask Ozzy because he's been hearing the questions too. Most of people ask me, like, when do you think? When I'm like, I don't know. I'm not focusing on that. I'm focusing on everyday game. I mean, I don't know when it's going to happen. I'm just playing one phone call away. So it's just excitement. Just play the game every day. I'm trying to just focus here. Don't think about anything else. Meanwhile, in Gwinnett, Albies is hitting an impressive 277 at the plate and has belted five home runs. But the young infielder says he doesn't pay attention to stats. He's more focused on being the best ball player possible. I mean, I don't look at my stats myself. I just play a game every day, try to get a knock, get on base, steal bases, be aggressive at all time. Albie says he's looking forward to playing with former teammate Dansby Swanson in the bigs. So whenever the Braves call, he'll be ready. In Gwinnett, Miles Garrett, Fox 5 Sports. Georgia Tech began its fall camp last week with a bit of a chip on their shoulder. Throughout head coach Paul Johnson's tenure, his teams have typically failed at recording back-to-back -back successful seasons. After closing out last year with four straight wins, it's something that has definitely motivated this team in the offseason. We're expecting to have a strong season because we had a strong offseason. Um, each guy is motivated and knows that you have to do um, a little bit more to get the extra, get the extras. And everything that we did was very intentional. Uh, we made sure that everyone was, you know, going the extra mile so we can have a better season. Now the Yellow Jackets come into the 2017 season with an experienced offense along with a new quarterback under center. Last time that happened under Coach Johnson, they hoisted up a trophy filled with oranges. This team is, is really composed a little bit like our 14 team. And that we, we got a new quarterback, a couple of new guys, but the majority of them have played. We'd love to have the same result we had in 14s. Yeah, um, we have a lot of returning stars coming back on the offense. And he's right, similar to Smooth. Sim Smooth had a lot of A back coming back, a lot of receivers coming back, linemen. So, yeah, he's, he's definitely right. I never, I, I, never thought of, I never thought about it like that. He's right. Yeah, I do. Uh, like I said, new quarterback, but now we have a lot of guys coming back. You know, those A backs, you know, we got a lot of experience coming back on the outside, things like that on defense. You know, we, got, we have a lot of experience. Tech opens up its season in the new Mercedes Benz Stadium against Tennessee, allowing the whole country to see if the Jackets can repeat some of that 2014 magic. In Bobby Dodd Stadium, Miles Garrett, Fox 5 Sports.
The, the first day I walked in the building, Matt Ryan was waiting for me. We had lunch together. Uh, and that type of commitment to the success of the organization um, has been one that's been really welcoming to me. The Atlanta Falcons added new faces to the team this offseason. One of those is offensive coordinator Steve Sarkeesian, who comes after stints as head coach of the University of Southern California and most recently as an assistant under Nick Saban at the University of Alabama. Sarkeesian will command an offense coming off a historic season, but he plans on adding a few wrinkles to improve. I don't want to just uphold what has been done before. I want to keep finding little ways to how can we make it better? You know, how can we improve? Um, and that's why I'm here, you know. I mean, I think the competitiveness in, in all of us in this organization, for sure, I know that's the first thing Dan's looking for in any player and any coach. Uh, the competitor in me is how far can we take it? Pretty much the same as it was before, uh, which is good. You know, we've got a lot of, a lot of guys on our team who are back, um, you know, who have a lot of experience in this system, who understand the rules, the scheme, the terminology really, really well. So. Uh, there hasn't been a whole lot of changes for us. I think Sark and, and some of the new coaches have probably had the biggest transition uh, in learning our system, but they've done a great job. I've really enjoyed working with, uh, with Steve. Hey, Sark's a great uh, OC, um, real chill, players coach. He, um, he listens. He's not stuck in his ways or anything like that. Easy to communicate with. Now, Sarkeesian came to Flowery Branch just about a month removed from coaching the University of Alabama in the national championship game, a game in which they lost. Sound familiar? actually watched the Super Bowl and was feeling for Dan, you know, uh, and every, you know, all these guys. To be that close, I, I know how I know how that feels. I had just dealt with it a, about a week previously in the national championship game. Sark says he wants to put players in the best situation to be successful in hopes of finishing next season once again in the Super Bowl. From Flowery Branch, Miles Garrett, Fox 5 Sports. John Collins is the pick at number 19 for New Hawks GM Travis Schlenk in the 2017 NBA Draft. Only days removed from trading Dwight Howard to the Charlotte Hornets, the new man in charge made his first draft day selection this evening. I think first of all his athleticism, his ability to run the floor. Uh, he's a great rebounder, which obviously as we know we've struggled a little bit in the past here. Um, and he can score in the post, so it gives us another option inside. Last year, you saw his athleticism and then the big jump that he's made from his freshman year to his sophomore year, obviously being the most improved player in the ACC. You see, you see the growth he's made, and you know he's still a 19-year-old kid, so there's still a lot of room to grow. Uh, me and Coach are obviously going to have to, you know, talk talk about some things and you know what my role is going to be and all that type that type of stuff. I'm coming in as a young guy, so. I'm definitely confident. Collins joins an Atlanta team that still has a lot of question marks, especially with the future of Paul Millsap still up in the air. But one thing's for certain, Phillips Arena will be seeing some fresh new faces this fall. From the Omni Hotel, Miles Garrett, Fox 5 Sports. He's, uh, he's got it. He's, he's got a superstar written all over him. Just uh, bring him along slow and let him experience some success at each level. And I'm sure next spring he's, he's probably going to be pushing for, for a job in Atlanta. There's a new super prospect moving his way up the Braves farm system. His name is Ronald Acuna, not to be confused with Acuna Matata, but this rising star seems to have no worries when it comes to hitting baseballs. Every time I did better and uh, it always gets to my head. I, I'm like one step away to be in the big club. So it, it's everything, uh, everything is like coming to my head like so quickly. Since being called up to Gwinnett, Acuna has wowed fans with his power at the plate, which has earned him the right of Atlanta's new number one prospect. So how's he getting along with former number one Ozzy Albies? We always talk a lot and we joke a lot with that, but uh, I know Ozzy for quite a bit and uh, he always has been like a big brother to me. He always helped me through through my through me, through my career, career and also in spring training as well. So he's like a big brother to me and he's, all, he's also more like a brother and he's helped me a lot. Now Acuna is just 19 years old, making him the youngest player in AAA baseball. But that hasn't stopped the Braves before. You might remember a pretty good center fielder back in the late 90s. Two pitch. Uh, we communicate a lot. Uh, he actually has worked with me uh, back then, and uh, every time we ever have a chance to talk and talk about baseball, uh, he's more than happy to do so and help me a lot in my career. Chipper Jones says it's safe to say there's a problem-free philosophy with all these prospects waiting to make their trip to Atlanta. The fact of the matter is it's nice to have horses like that in the stable that are coming up through the ranks that are going to help the club for a long time. In Gwinnett, Miles Garrett, Fox 5 Sports.
when Georgia head coach Kirby Smart got a text from star tailback Nick Chubb saying we need to talk, he admits he got a little bit nervous. But much to him and Georgia fans' delight, both he and Sonny Michelle pledged their allegiance to Dog Nation for one more year. When I got that text, it was, okay, here we go. When he told me, it was uh, very simple for me. I didn't have a lot to say. I didn't want to screw it up. So once he said he was staying, I was, thank you, and let's don't look back from here, and let's go win this bowl game. And uh, he, was a, he was a big part of that. It's a great opportunity to know I have somebody, a great friend, uh, to be able to take this, this victory lap with. It's the last, it's the last one. It's going to be a great one. It's going to be a fun one. And I'm excited. And I can't wait. It kind of made it easier once we both knew we both wanted to come back. So we kind of came in together and just made an agreement to just come back and play our last year together here at Georgia. And Sonny's kind of the guy who can do it all, man. Whatever you ask him, catch the ball, run the ball, block, you know. Um, and I kind of can do it both. But he's a little better in some areas, and I'm a little better in some areas, too. So I think it kind of complements each other and just the way we play. With most of his starters back on defense and a more experienced quarterback under center, the stage is set for both Sonny Michelle and Nick Chubb to brighten up the lights at Sanford Stadium one more time. In Birmingham, Alabama, Miles Garrett, Fox 5 Sports. Well, that's a wrap here at Bobby Dodd Stadium for Atlanta United, finishing their last game here at Grand Field in a one-to-one -one tie against Orlando City before they head just up the road to Mercedes-Benz Stadium for their new home. But I'm not sure the players or the fans are quite ready to leave yet. We're going to miss this place. The march coming through the tunnel, the varsity, the tailgating, everything. So we just enjoy the intimacy. We've made friends here and we're season ticket holders. So uh, we look forward to the new Our time here, we weren't, you know, having that scenario where it's like, ah, oh, we can't wait to get out of here and into our new home <clears throat> because we enjoyed it so much. Uh, the atmosphere here was fantastic. The fans were awesome. The field was amazing. Um, so we, we really enjoyed our time here. Though the intimacy of Bobby Dodd Stadium will be missed, there is one thing for certain that has fans pretty excited for the Five Stripes new venue to call home. Food! Thank you, Arthur, for the food prices. In Bobby Dodd Stadium, Miles Garrett, Fox 5 Sports. Fox 5 News at Noon starts right now. Good afternoon, I'm Miles Garrett. We begin with breaking news. Just a few hours after her arrest, 86-year-old international jewel thief Doris Payne is behind bars. Here's her most recent mugshot taken just a short time ago at the DeKalb County Jail. Payne is now behind bars on a probation violation. Fox 5's Angelique Proctor joins us now with the details. Angelique. Also new at noon, a crash seriously injures at least one person in Cherokee County. The Cherokee County Sheriff's Office shared these photos of the scene at Town Lake Parkway and Town Lake Hills South Drive. It happened around 9 this morning. Deputies closed down westbound lanes of Town Lake Parkway for a short time. No word on what caused the incident. In Gwinnett County, police have accused a housekeeper and her husband of victimizing a 64-year-old widow. Police say 34-year-old Anna Zaharia and 41-year-old Daniel Zaharia face numerous charges, including exploitation of an at-risk adult. The woman's bank initially tipped off police. Her late husband was a successful business owner. They've accused the Zaharias of stealing at least half a million dollars from the woman over several years. Let's take a live look at our Georgia Power Cam. The hottest weather we've seen all year is hanging around for the next few days. Fox 5 Storm Team meteorologist Alec Mao joins us now.
In spring training this year, the thought in Braves country was that Ozzie Albies would become the second baseman of the future to tag along with current Braves shortstop Dansby Swanson. There's, there's Albies right there. So, so far, that's been delayed mostly because of the all-star caliber performance from hometown kid <laughs> Brandon, that dude, Brandon Phillips, that's what we call him. And that hasn't deterred Albies from having an impressive season, too. The 20 year old has been responsible for 44 runs and 78 hits for the G Braves. Naturally, fans have been waiting for his call up. So, what gives? Don't ask Ozzy. He's been hearing the question, too, and I, I think it makes him crazy. Most of people ask me, like, when do you think? When do you? I'm like, I don't know. I'm not focusing on that. I'm focusing on everyday game. First day, like, um, on me every day. But then they were like, calm and relaxed. Like, yeah, let's just wait. Whenever it happens. <laughs> All right, a little must-see Braves baseball.